Hello guys, my name is Lucas and welcome. Today we're going to be selling items, so we're going to be learning how to delete items from our users' inventories and we're also going to be giving them money based on the price of each item. Before we begin, I want to deeply thank all of my subscribers and especially those of you who support me or have supported me on Patreon. Thank you so much. Now let's begin with our video. First of all, I'm going to start by creating a button next to each of our items so that we can use that button to call our PHP function and sell it. I'm assuming at this point you already know how to add a UI button and how to assign a function to it, so I'm just going to play this in fast forward. All right, now that we have our sell button, let's go to Visual Studio Code to create our PHP functions. All right, guys, so I finished setting up my sell item.php script. And just a reminder, we're not dealing with security yet. So that's why we, you see, for example, we are sending the user ID directly from our client and we're not going through the process of logging in each time or having a user token or something like that. That's going to be for the future videos because we're still going through the basics here. So anyway, I'm going to go through the PHP script. I'm not going to be typing it as I go so that we can save some time. So yeah, let's go. First of all, we require our connection settings because we're going to be dealing with our database. So require connection settings. And if you remember from the last video, we create the connection up here in connection settings.php. Now we will need two variables submitted by our user. The item ID, which is the item that we want to sell, and the user ID that should be stored in our user info script inside our main script. So we get these two variables from the user. We check our connection, like usually we do, just to see if we're connected to the server or something like that. And here we're going to start creating our first SQL. So our first SQL is just select. So we're going to select the price only this time from our items table, where the ID is equals to the item ID that was submitted by the user. So this is the item that we want to sell. We just want to see how much it costs in our database. So for example, here, what we are actually looking at is here in the items table. Let's say we submitted ID one. So we're going to see, okay, this is the ID one. The price is 200. And remember that the items in this table only appears once. This is a table with the information of the items only. So we get the price. We run this query in this result here and we want to store the item price so that later we can sell it, right? So result connection query, we run our query. And then if the result has a number of rows greater than zero, we're going to store the result in this variable called item price. So item price is equals to the result, fetch associative array, and we want to get the value with the key price. So price is the key to get the value of our price, and we're just going to store it here. After that, we're going to create our second SQL. And it's the SQL that is going to delete our item relationship with our user from that table. So we're not going to delete the item from the items table. You cannot do that because if you delete the item, there is going to be a mess in your server, in your game, because all the users that had that item, then they're not going to find the information uh, is going to be gone suddenly. So remember, you don't delete things from here. You only delete items from the user's items relationship table. So we delete the relationship, for example, from my account with that item, that means I no longer have that item. My cat is making a mess out there. Anyway, so delete from user's items. So we need to see the ID, item ID. So where item ID is equals to the item ID that we submitted and 
So this is just like in C sharp and user ID is equals to the user ID that we submitted so that we make sure that we're deleting the relationship with our user and not some other user. So same here, we have a result two. So this is a different result. Uh, so we use the connection to send a query and if result two, that means if we actually deleted the item, if the query was successful, we are going to finally do our third SQL. So our third SQL, SQL 3, is an update type SQL. So what update does is change or modify information that is already set in your server. So update users, we're going to update the users table. So if you see back here, our users table, we have four users and they have coins. We want to modify or update this column, the coins column. So back here, update the users table and we're going to set the coins column to something new. So right now our coins is zero. So we're going to tell PHP, okay, we want to set the coins column to whatever coins we have now, plus the price of the item that we're trying to sell. If I have a hundred coins and I sell something for 10 coins, that's going to be a hundred plus 10. So the new value of my coins column is going to be 110. And this needs to be in my user, right? Because remember, we have different rows for different users. So I need to find my own ID here, doo -doo -doo -doo, and then I'm going to update the coins value in the row with that ID. So items price, and then where ID is equals to the user ID that we submitted. So then we use the connection to submit the query, and there we go. Now, else if it didn't happen, if we actually couldn't delete the item from our inventory, we're just going to submit an error and else echo zero, and then we're going to close our connection. All right, so now that we have our sell item.php script, we're going to add a function on our web class so that we can actually sell the item from here. So scripts web. All right, so we can make it very similar to our previous function, get item. So I'm just going to copy this function, paste it down here, and we are going to, of course, change the name to sell item. So sell item requires a item ID because we want to know the price of the item. And it also needs to know the user ID because we want to remove the item user relationship from that table. So we are going to create another parameter string and we're just going to call it user ID. And we're going to have this callback for for future episode because we want to do something after we sell the item. So we want to update our UI, for example, we want to refresh the number of coins we have. We want to no longer be able to see the item on our inventory, etc. Now we create a form, we add the field of item ID, and we also need to add the field for our user ID. Remember that we need these two variables. So here I'm just going to copy user ID, paste it here and here, and there we go. Now, remember to change the URL. So here, instead of getItem.php, now we're doing sellItem.php. This is the same, this is the same, and we're going to show the results as text in case we have any error or something like that. And this string JSON array, we don't really need this. We're not actually storing anything right now, we're just selling something. So this callback is just going to be empty for now, so we're just going to give it an empty string or we could, yeah, if you don't want to deal with that right now, just let's delete the callback. When we, when we use it, we're going to add the parameter back here. So let's remove this callback. Right now we don't need any callback. Just sell the item. All right, now that we have our sell item I enumerator function, we're going to set it in our items class where we create each of our items. So here where we fill the information, we're going to add one more part, where is where we set the sell button. So remember that at the beginning of this video, in my item prefab, 
I added one thing. Uh, let me see here. Item. You see, we have name, price, description, and I also added one more object called sale button. So we're going to just find it like we find everything else. So item.transform.find sale button dot get component button dot on click dot add listener and we're going to use a lambda expression so let me show you like this and inside here we're going to start the core routine from our web class so start core routine main dot instance dot web dot sell item and we need two variables in our sell item function we need the item id and the user id so let's create those two variables here first string i'm going to call one i id and the other one is going to be called uid so where do we get our item id from Remember that we're in the loop that is creating the items object on our UI. And we already have the item ID stored from another function. So we can simply use this item ID and we should be able to use it. So item ID. The user ID, however, is stored already in our main.instance.userInfo. And we have a variable called user ID. So we can get it from anywhere store these two ids as variables and then we're just going to put those variables here so i id and u id so that we can submit these two values to our cell item.php file nice so the cell button now should get our function that we just set here cell button get component on click at listener it should do all this and then when we press it it should start the call routine that is here in the web class and that call routine is going to call our php script set item .php, which we created and it should run the queries on our database and we should see in our database how our user get coins as we sell the items and also this users items relationships should be deleted as we sell the items. So let's go back to Unity and try this. I'm a little bit excited. Let's go play it. Test user. One, two, three, four, five, six. Log in. We have four items right now. Um, and if you see here our users items, let me get a little bit bigger. And our users, more, more importantly, our test user has zero coins right now. So let's try to sell something. I'm going to sell the potion. We got an empty message, so I'm guessing it worked. So let's go back to here, users, refresh this, and there we go. We have 25 coins on our first user, and the user's items relationship should be, wow. We deleted the two potions at once because our query, our delete from users items, so that there was an item ID and user ID that were the same twice. So it run this twice. So we have that problem. Let's try this with another item. So now if I play this again, probably the two potions are going to be gone. So test user 456 login. Yeah, two potions are gone. Let's sell the sword now. Sell the sword. Um, let's go here back to users. We should have 225 coins. Oh yeah, we're rich. And if we go back to users items, there's only one relationship left. That means that when we start this again, we're just going to have our wood. So right now we have a problem that is if we have many items with the same ID, our query is going to delete all of those items at once so that's why we need to use our unique IDs here remember that the user ID and the item ID can be repeated 
in this table. However, this ID is going to be unique. So we need to have this users items relationship ID so that we can use this ID for our query instead. However, this video is starting to get a little bit long. So that's going to be a homework for you guys. Try to use this ID, store it in Unity, and then try to submit this ID to your PHP script so that you only delete one row from your users items relationships. And I'm going to do it in the next video for you guys, but that's your homework. Uh, for now, guys, thank you so much for watching. I think this is starting to get fun, trying to get the money from items. Then we're going to think of ways on how we can harvest items. So if you have any suggestions like lucky draws or mini games, let me know in the comments what you think we should do so that we can get different items and later sell them. Again, guys, thank you so much for watching. Please remember to like this video, subscribe to my channel and share it with your friends. That really helps me a lot. I will see you all on the next one. Goodbye.